Okay, hello and welcome to today's event, everyone. I'm Jason Gumpert from MS Dynamics World, and we are here for uh, an introduction to the new Microsoft Dynamics Serum Project Service Solution. I'm joined by Yen Senov and Jen Weissman. Uh, both are senior solution architects from SA Global. It's really glad that uh, it's really great to have them for the first time here. As we get started, please know that uh, you can add your feedback and ask questions during today's event. You can use the Q&A block or the chat that you should see to the right side of the webcast session here. Uh, Yen and Jen will be making time for questions at the end. We'll also have some poll questions to gather some feedback at near the end, which should be pretty interesting. Uh, so uh, without further delay, please allow me to welcome Yen Senov to start things off. And Yen, let me just make sure your mic is open. Sorry, what was that, uh, Jason? Uh, I just I just opened up your line, so now we can hear you. Yep. Oh, all right. Thank thank you, Jason. Let's talk. Uh, let's take a look at the agenda for today. Uh, we'll start by take, taking a look or uh, talking about the Microsoft vision for enabling transmitted uh, services across the various service domains. Then we'll uh, introduce you to the new Dynamic CRM project service automation solution and talk about the capabilities. We'll uh, provide a high-level overview demo of a project lifecycle in uh, CRM project service automation. And then we'll finish off by doing a comparison of the various uh, Microsoft project management solutions since we uh, know that there's some curiosity in terms of how these uh, solutions compare. But first, let's start uh, by taking a look at these uh, three criteria for successful and uh, what's top of mind for service ex executives. And these resolve around three core priorities for these firms, uh, their customers, their employees, and their overall business. A successful service delivery strategy for project-based uh, business uh, revolves around uh, a few key organiz organizational uh, capabilities. First is the ability to deepen the engagement with their customers and become a long-term trusted advisor. The second is to empower their professionals to become an integral part of business and participate in their careers and in achieving client success. And third is to stay competitive by foster, foster a culture uh, of making informed and timely decisions by differentiating their uh, practice from the competition and by navigating new business models to attain optimal growth. To facilitate this, Microsoft offers a portfolio of customer engagement solutions, including Dynamic CRM Salesforce Automation, which helps salespeople to be more productive, win more business, and build trusted relationship with their clients. Dynamic CRM also helps companies build customer loyalty by providing its exceptional customer service across all channel and service types, including self-service, assisted service, and on-site services. Mm -hmm. Dynamics Marketing and uh, Microsoft social, social Engagement provides an integrated marketing management solution and enable com companies to monitor what's being said about their products, their brands, or services across a variety of channels to drive customer engagement. This broad set of customer engagement solutions is a clear differentiator for Microsoft in the market. Specifically around service capabilities of Dynamics CRM, a key element of Microsoft's strategy is to provide a unified service solution that covers all aspects of an organization's services relationship with their customers so that they can differentiate, differentiate their offering, maximize customer satis satisfaction, and ultimately increase revenue. When we talk about on-site services, one of Microsoft's major strategies and themes today is around providing transformative service. This is achieved through on-site services that are offered through field service and project services automation capabilities. 
field service is represented by the integration of the acquired field service functionality from field one. And project service automation is a new offering that is built organically within Microsoft uh, CRM. The ability to perform both service or field service and project-based services in a single solution is critical to many services organizations. So what exactly is Microsoft Project Service Automation? Project Service Automation provides an integrated customer engagement solution for project-based organizations who deliver customer-facing and revenue-generating services, including planning and estimating, optimizing resource utilization, tracking and approving project tasks and finances, and monitoring key performance metrics, all to enable on-time, on-budget project delivery and to improve efficiency, collaboration, and profitability. Project service automation is designed to manage the complete life cycle of a project, from sales and business development activities through project execution and closeout. The solution is designed to meet the needs of constituents across the value chain of a project-based services organization, from practice management executives to sales and account management team members, to the project delivery team, and ultimately to the end customer. Developing project field service automation and on uh, uh, dynamic CRM ensures that the people are integral to every stage of the customer journey and each step of the project life cycle. This includes managing opportunities and get engaged collaboratively early in the process. Project planning, including resource management to get a jump start with most optimal project plan, collaborate project delivery across internal and external team, tracking time and expenses effectively to ensure on time and on project projects, and managing key billing and back office functions. And of course, measuring and proving customer success through real-time analytics. So by providing access to the right tool at the right time for the right person, through the right device, CRM Project Service Automation makes it easy to capture and work with information in real time on the go. And of course, developing Project Service Automation on the Microsoft Productivity Cloud and application stack and integrating into technologies like SharePoint, Yammer, and Office improves employee productivity, enable customer co collaboration, and results in an increased project profitability. So with that short introduction, uh, let's turn it over to Jen Weissmore uh, on the SA Global team, who will walk us through a high-level project lifecycle on Dynamics CRM Project Service Automation. Jen, it's uh, all yours. Great. Thank you, Jen. And I okay, will try to pass. Me to sharing? Yes, should come up. Uh, should be coming up here. Great, thank you. All right, as Yen mentioned, I'm going to do about a 20, 25 minute or so demo of the new project service automation solution for Microsoft CRM. We'll cover the basic project lifecycle, kind of from start to finish, hit a little bit of everything along the way. And as Yen mentioned, the solution covers end to end of that project lifecycle, all the way from the front end on the opportunity management through estimating, project setup, time and expense entry, and billing. But let's circle back and kind of start at some of the analytics, and then we'll finish here as well, too. Um, one of the ways of displaying the analytics that we need to operate our business is through dashboards. And here is just an example of one of the dashboards that come, comes out of the box. 
with CRM PSA. As you can see, I'm on my practice management dashboard, and I have snippets of information that are delivered in these interactive graphs. For instance, um, you know, if we look in the top right-hand corner, I can see sales for the previous uh, month and my current month, as well as that gross margin, costs, utilization, but let, let's just peek at this sales one and dig into it a little bit more. So I can see sales for April and May, and if I select on April, I'll see my slicer here, and I can choose to look at that by customer, okay? And once I do that, it breaks out that April by customer, and I can pop that out into a little bit larger view if I want to see that as well, too. Um, and if I need to drill this down more, let's say perhaps I want to see that by role or resource, then I can just continue to kind of investigate and drill through there. Okay? And this is in addition to the standard Power BI type tools that are always available with the Microsoft solutions. Okay? And the same thing down in the left-hand corner, now I can look at booked hours by month for my, um, my entire staff. I can see April and May, look at differences in that um, between that pace of you know, how, um, how we're progressing on projects and how much time people are actually um, billing um, uh, into the projects. If I want to slice and dice that, I, again, I can select April, choose by, let's say, by role this time, and then I'm actually being able to slice and dice this, dice this by the different type of roles that I've broken my organization into, for instance, maybe a PM, principal, functional consultant, okay? So it just gives me this quick BI, one of those nice tools on the dashboard. But as Yen mentioned, CRM PSA manages that end-to-end -end life cycle. So let's kind of start at the beginning of the opportunity and pick it up there, and then we'll walk it through the process. So I'm going to switch to a different dashboard. I'm going to go to my sales activity dashboard. And through my sales tools, I'm able to capitalize on all of the great sales and marketing tools that are inherent already in Microsoft CRM, but now I'm adding in the features for strong project management through the project service automation, so I get the best of both worlds here. So I'm on my sales activity. I can look at my opportunities. I've got some leads I'm working up here in the right-hand corner. Some of those have progressed to actual opportunities, and I see those. And my activities that I'm managing and tracking on all that, those events are shown here exactly, you know, quick and handy where I can get to them. But let's dig into one of these opportunities. I'm going to go and use my search facility here and look at a project, um, a opportunity I have called a website development. I have a client that needs a quick client portal done, kind of a quick turnaround small project. So as I open that opportunity, I'm able to see all um, the key things I need to know. If I look in the top right-hand corner, I can see that it's going to be around a $75,000 project. I expect it to close pretty quick here at the end of the week. I can see all my activities and notes that um, are right there on it, who's working with me on the sales team, right? The client has about a $75,000 budget to work with, so I'm going to be trying tracking to that. Um, but that gives me that, that nice um, central place where I, everyone can see what progress uh, is taking place with this opportunity. <clears throat> now, I've worked up an estimate and a tentative schedule for this opportunity. Let's look at that and how that interplays with my opportunity um, as I'm pursuing um, this project with the client. Okay? So I'm just going to scroll down here, and you'll see that I've established a quote for this opportunity. Um, right now, I'm around 63000 and change with what I've worked up on the work breakdown schedule, and I'm using my standard U.S. prices for this client. I have different price lists, and I've applied a certain one to this quote, you know, based on what defaulted from the client. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and open this quote up so we can take a little bit more look at the detail. If we look at the quote line section here, I can see that I have some services, some labor that I'm going to use um, to build this website for the client, and that's going to be around 60000 and some travel expenses, and I'm going to sell them some CRM online seats as well. So I can easily mix different types of elements in this quote, more project-related ones like services and travel expenses, as well as product-based ones like licenses, equipment, or things that might need to go hand-in-hand -hand with the labor and the, and the service part of um, the project delivery part. 
of my project. Okay? Now, let's take a look at where the service estimate comes in. Let's focus on that one for the moment. It's around 60000 How did I develop that estimate? Okay? I'm just going to drill through, and we're going to look at the work breakdown structure or the WBS that's associated to this estimate. Okay? Now, this is an optional way I used for quoting. I didn't have to do it this way. I could have just kind of keyed in some roles and some rates and, um, or inherited the rates from my price list. But I, in this case, I really wanted to break it down in a little more detail and kind of use these tasks to build up my estimate. So as soon as I go into the WBS, you'll see kind of a normal look and feel for a work breakdown structure. I have my list of tasks over here on the left-hand panel. Okay, So I've got some project management tasks. Um, I have a scope development. I'm going to do a project plan, plan for a kickoff meeting, and execute that. Then we're going to have a workshop on requirements analysis with the client, do some architecture and design development and Q&A. So those all flow together for about 340 hours of work on this. And that's going to be accomplished by a few different people. If I look at my roles here, let me just expand this out, and you'll see that I have um, a project manager, functional consultant, architect. So three or four different people will fill roles on this project. Now, when I look over here on my Gantt chart on the right, I can see it's a very typical Gantt chart, but I've got all the flexibility to you know, actually navigate and do some drag and drop here on the chart. So perhaps I want to change my relationship predecessors. I can always just drag and do that with my arrows here. Or if a task needs to move out, I need to add more hours, I can simply adjust that with the drag and drop. And that Gantt chart will adjust my tasks on the left. Now, if I'm really focusing in on my tasks, um, and I want to just hide that. I can hide that Gantt, and that just gives me a nice table view of these tasks, the effort that I expect on them, and then the start and end date. I've let the system plan this out for me based on my predecessors, or I could have manually said, no, I'm going to fill this in myself, but I've let the system do that rough cut estimating for me. So I'm going to start this next week, and we should finish up in mid-July based on this workload. So that gives me a look, gives you a kind of a glance at that task-based approach. Now, you'll re if, you, if you remember, I applied a certain price list to this that had rates. This is a T&M project it's going to be, so I have billable rates for this client. Okay. So now let's switch to our estimate view. And that just takes the work breakdown, applies that price list, and then time phases this revenue for me, this projected revenue, so I can kind of see how this estimate would flow week by week. I've asked for the time scale to be week. I could change that to a different time scale if I wanted to. Okay? So now I can see that revenue all rolled up, right? as well as by role. So I can see my task by role, time phased out by week. Okay? If I wanted to choose different roll-ups by category, I could, um, I could switch to that. And perhaps I want to look at that maybe a time phase by hours. Now my WBS is actually time phase by hours here. Okay? And I can adjust that as needed. And if I'm looking at my cost side, based on my standard cost for these roles, I get a cost picture of that as well, too. So using that WBS, putting that price list together with that, and I've developed this nice time phase estimate um, to, uh, to give me a sense of how this project will look and when it can be delivered. Now let's go back to our quote. If we look at the service line here, let me just open this up. You saw I had that WES very detailed. Often I don't want to maybe, you know, I don't need to present it to the client that way. Perhaps I want to roll it up at a little bit higher level. So when I brought that WBS into my quote line here, I imported it from the WBS. And when I brought it in, I said I wanted to summarize it by role. <clears throat> So it's taken those roles, just rolled up those time and delivery dates by role. So now I've got a nice high-level summary that I can choose to present um, to the client. And had I not used the WBS, then I could have just worked my quote lines right up from here in whatever flavor and level of granularity I wanted to. Okay. Now let's go back to our quote quick and look at just a few metrics that I get right up front on my quote header here and then my profitability analysis, because I really want to know if I'm able to fit the budget the client set before me and that delivery date. So if I look at the top, I can see that 
I'm within the customer budget of 75,000 because we're at 63.5 and some change. And we were scheduled to finish around mid-July, so that puts us within that end of month time frame from the client. So I always see this as I work that quote, it always will map me back to those client expectations. Based on my standard cost, I'm at about a 33% gross margin on this. And when I pop down to my profitability analysis, I can simply refresh these charts here. And that just gives me a little finer picture. I can see that revenue flow month by month. And I can also look at it broken out by role. So it just gives me some nice feedback right here on my quote. Now I'm going to put this quote before my customer. And once I do that, let's say that they are uh, ready to move ahead, then I can go ahead and just mark this as one. And that will transfer everything I'm doing here on the quote into a project contract, bring all that over. I don't have to rekey everything, and I can just move smoothly from this sales and opportunity management into my project delivery with this integrated solution that we have um, with the project service embedded in CRM. So now let's move on to the delivery stage for this project. Let's say we're going to move ahead. Okay. And I'm just going to open up another project that I have pre-staged with some information just because we're kind of tight on timing here on our demo window. Okay. So I'm going to pull up a project. And I'll just, same one here that we had called web development. Now, let's do some resourcing on this project. Now we're kicking it going. We're going to need people to deliver this project. I could have done my resourcing early on, right up in that quoting phase. Either way, that's fine. I chose to wait this time and just do it once the project kicked off. So let's look at some of the tools I have to resource people to this project. Let's go back and revisit our WBS. Now, if you remember, I had four roles that we needed. We needed some PM time, functional consultant, an architect, and a developer. Okay? So now, when I choose the Generate Project Team button here on the WBS, it's going to analyze this WBS for me. Look at how many people I need based on my constraints for each role, and then propose that team makeup and and put the requirements together for me of who I need when. Okay, I'm not going to assign it yet. I'm going to have the system kind of help me do that. But right now it just said, okay, I'm going to book these generic resource demands. I know you're going to need an architect, developer, functional consultant from this time and this many hours. Okay. Now, I've already assigned myself per cash as the project manager. Okay. Um, so I've booked those hours, 140 of those hours, now go into my calendar. But let's look at how we're situated for this functional consultant. What are our options here? So I'm going to go into the hard book here. That just lets me look at potential candidates for this role. So when I first open the screen, I'm able to see all of the potential candidates that might fit this based on who they are, their functional consultants. So my filters over on the left here really allow me to just dial in on this candidate list. I'm just looking at everyone who's a consultant, but I could look at it by org unit, by team, or maybe perhaps a certain skill set I'm trying to find okay, and narrow that down. And once I have that list, um, if you look at the top here, we can see the requirement that we brought in for my WBS, or I could have keyed and adjusted it in, uh, manually if I didn't want to use the WBS. But I can see I need this consultant for 80 hours. I need them 40 hours the first week and 40 hours the last week. The system's smart enough to know from my WBS how that flows through. Okay. Now, let's just, as I circle down the list, I'll get a nice little pop-up of each person, getting a little sense of their skills, availability, um, you know, what their bill rate structure is. Okay. So that kind of gives me a sense if I want to mark a couple together and then compare, I can do that as well too. Right. Now let's kind of zero in on Caitlin here. I've worked with her on other projects. I'm really comfortable with her. I think she could be a good fit for this. Um, I see that I think we can make it work that first week, mm, second week, the last week. She's already booked. Let's see what she's on, and maybe I can make some adjustments there. So I can see that she's booked on this project one. That's also one that I managed. So I do have a sense of, you know, I think I have some flexibility here, and I can, um, I can remove this uh, this booking from her and, uh, and maybe move her on to my project. So I'm going to go ahead and book her. 
And then I can go through and zero out, um, once I book her, and zero out the uh, adjustment on the other project. Okay? So I'm going to select Caitlin, and then I'm going to go ahead and book. Okay? And then that's going to allocate those hours to her calendar and add her to my team and book her to my project. Now, another way that I'm able to do resource requests as well is perhaps I don't know everyone who is, you know, on our dev team. I'm not as familiar as I am with the consultant, right? So I could select the developer requirement, and I could say, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and submit a request based on who manages this team, and that resource request will go to that person. They can look at it look at what I've said in there and say, hey, I think this person is good, and I'll tentatively book that person to the project for you. And then I can look at that and say, yep, I think that sounds good. So using that request process, it helps me then to either pass that on or have a more centralized resourcing um, function if that's my business model around resourcing. And the third way I might want to look at candidates for the project is to be able to allow people to kind of investigate what requirements are out there themselves through the self-service mobile app. So for instance, I just grabbed a couple screenshots here um, and pulled them into PowerPoint. But this is what it would look like on my mobile if I went into the um, Investigate Work application. I could see that there's um, a developer needed on the CRM upgrade project, some functional consultants, architects. And if I selected the CRM upgrade role, I could get a little more information. I could see the customer, where it's located, what we think the duration of that assignment would be, what specific requirements are on it, who else is on that team. And if it's something that I'm interested in, then I can indicate my interest that I want to be considered for that. And then that will then flag up to the, to the PM and the resourcing manager that, hey, this is something that you know, I'd like you to consider me for. So that's another great way, way of really allowing people to have a little more independence and a little more control um, on, on, uh, on what they, um, you know, they might be able to indicate you know, who they want to work with and what type of project, especially for large organizations. Okay. Now, I didn't mention it, but of course I could always just if I know who I want, I could just assign them right out of the gate to the project by just selecting that bookable resource, um, and then I'm good to go as well, too. Okay. So once my team is built, then one of the key things on continuing that this team works together well is that collaboration between them. And CRM, um, Project Service Automation, or CRM, is heavily integrated into the Office 365 group directly in So I'm in CRM still, and I can simply just go Office 365 groups. It's going to log me in based on my credentials and open up the Office 365 group page that's set up for this project. This is a one-time thing I did as a PM is I opened up this project when I converted it from the quote. So now I've got all the tools of Office 365 built right into CRM. If I look on the left here, I can see my calendar items that are scheduled. We've got a kickoff meeting coming up. We're going to review the plan. We've got the client workshop coming up next week. So I can see all that right here. And if I open up my calendar, it's going to take me right through to my Office 365. I'm in my calendar as per cash. I can see the calendar for this project, website development. I can see these other ones as well jump into my other groups, do my email, whatever I need to do. So that just tight integration really saves me time and helps keep me informed of what's going on. The section in the middle here you'll notice has my conversations. So my Skype conversations, I can quickly reach out to people on the team, um, as well as be able to um, you know, really have all that central location for the, the chatter that's going on about it. I can open up OneNote right from here. If you're not familiar with OneNote, it's really a great tool, especially for joint collaboration, for note taking and working on documents. So for instance, maybe we have some note taking we're going to be doing in a requirement session coming up. I'm able to then all collaboratively put our notes together as the session's going on. And we've got one central place to be able to then edit and work on these notes. Very much easier than a lot of documents spread all over and trying to consolidate at the end. And of course, all my documents that I might have attached to it would be here, and then my team members would show here. And as I resource to the project, then those are automatically added to my site here. Okay. 
So this is a, just another way of really enhancing the efficiency of my team as we work together on this project. Okay, now that we're off and running on this project, let's enter some time and expense. Okay. Now, I could, I'm going to do it from my PC. I could do it from a mobile or tablet device as well, but you'll get the sense of it just as I work it um, as I'm doing it as a user from my PC. So let's go back to our main menu for project service automation, and I'm going to go into time entries here. Now, right when I come in, you can see I've already started my timesheet for the week. I had some time I put in yesterday, okay? And now I'm ready to put in some time for today on Tuesday. Now, I have this nice calendar view here where I can just select the plus arrow at the bottom and I'm able to add um, those time entries. Or if I want, I can have a more traditional grid approach where I can simply select the project, choose my task, and add it into the squares over here on the right. But I kind of like this calendar view. Let's use that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit plus. It's going to open up a new time entry, brings the date I selected. Let's say I worked for eight hours. Okay, and I worked billable work versus absence or vacation. Okay, and I can just type ahead to the project. Let's say we worked on an architecture project, right? Um, and then I automatically see all the tasks I was associated to. Or I can say, you know, show me the whole list. Maybe I'm not assigned to this, but I can still put time to it. Um, that's okay. Then I can then choose what task that I'm selecting. Internal comments go through to my approver and stay on the record for the, um, for the time. External comments flow through actually to billing. So I worked on the project plan, and I'm just going to call this project plan development when I want that to go through the billing. Once I save that, okay, then that adds that to my day. Okay, and I can just continue to build through the week that way. Now, let's say it's end of month. We need to push time through because we're trying to get some cutoff in for billing. Okay? I could wait and do all my time in one week, or if certain days need to be submitted independently, then I have the option of doing that. I can just select those records here, hit Submit. It shows me which time ones that uh, I've selected. If those are the ones I want to submit, okay, then I can go ahead and do that, and those will be pushed through um, right away into the approval process. Now, let's look at that approval process. I'm going to go back to my main menu here and choose project approval. <clears throat> I've asked for the queue for time entries. Okay? There's different ones I may want to look at for expenses or vacation, or I can create my own filter that brings them all together in, in one view. I like to look at them kind of separately here. So I'm on a logged in as per cash, and he's a time approver for Trisha. So let's just start here by Trisha, and I can see down here she has some time from last week that's not approved yet. Okay. She worked on two different projects. Her time entry notes here to me tell me a little bit more that I may need to know, and then I can see how those comments are going to go through to billing. So I can select those, choose approve, or perhaps I need to reject those if she needs to change something about it. Um, I think you got the wrong task or the wrong project, or I could actually go in there and edit if I needed to and change certain things that, um, that I might want to change as an approver. But let's go ahead and approve this. And those will send those, now moving those from just the submitted entry to actually approved. And those will now flow into the actuals against that project. Okay. All right, let's take a quick look at expenses entry. And again, I can do this on my mobile. I'm just going to do it on my PC here. Same look and feel. I have my nice calendar view, or I could switch to a grid view here. Let's go back to our calendar view. Just going to enter a new expense, and let's say it's airfare. Okay. Choose the project. What type of expense? As you mentioned, it's airfare, and it's going to be for the kickoff meeting. Okay. If I was capturing this from my, um, my mobile device, of course, these receipts would be waiting here and preloaded for me with the entries I captured on my, on my mobile. In this case, I didn't, so I could simply navigate out, attach receipts independently if I wanted to, um, and then save that entry. Okay. And then my submission is very similar. I can just select what I want to submit and then hit everything for the expense statement together or individual ones if I need to push those through for certain projects. 
in a timely manner. Okay, okay so that should give you kind of a, a, a feel for how a key part of that project life cycle, time and expense, looks and feels for the users and for the approvers as they're trying to manage that process in your organization. Okay. Now that we have some activity on the project, let's look at a couple of our project tracking tools. Okay. Let's go back to our project and go back to, um, let's go back to our project our web development project. And when I go to the menu for this project, I see an option called project tracking. We'll pretend a couple of weeks are ago, have already gone by and I've started work on this project already. Now you can see my, Debbie, my Gantt chart on the right looks a little bit different. It has some indicators to me to let me know what's going on with this project. Right? When I look at the project management tasks, scoping, planning, kickoff meeting have been completed, right? Because the remaining hours are down to zero. Someone has, estimated, has updated the estimate to complete to zero. That indicates to me that these project tasks are done. So now they're a little bit different color blue, so I can quickly see. I've burned through 36 hours so far of my 140 hours of PM time. So now I can see that green bar is slowly moving across to give me a sense, really a quick graphical view of, you know, of what's happening and where I am on this project. Okay. So now if I hide this Gantt chart for a second, you'll get a little bit more view of what's on this project tracking view here. I can see that um, the effort that was budgeted on each of these tasks, the actual hours spent, the remaining hours, okay, and if I need to update this and say, you know, um, I think I'm going to be a little bit over, I really do have under 20, there's just a lot of PM, tough client on this project, right? So then I can update those remaining hours and then that will adjust my schedule variance, giving me my estimate at completion and then my variance. My progress percentage tells me, based on those hours, I'm about 10% through of this project, okay? 23% of PM, that's the only thing we've started, and we've burned through about 10% of our hours, okay? Now, if I look at this from a cost perspective, just another indicator of my progress on it, I can see that from a cost perspective, okay, this is what my, um, based on the standard cost of those rules, this is kind of my burn rate from a cost perspective, and where I am, so 10% effort-wise, and pretty close to that on my cost consumption as well. Okay. So that lets me just kind of get a sense quickly from the project of where I am on it. Of course, we have all the various BI tools that we can bring together, budgets to actual, by project, by PM, aggregate for the business, but this is just one way of looking at it really quickly within the context of my project. Now the last task I want to do in our project cycle, life cycle, is invoicing. Okay. Let me select a project that I have ready for invoicing. Okay. So we're just going to go back to our main menu, select our project. And I'm going to look at this one here called architecture audit. We've been doing a, a, a technology audit for a client and it's a T&M project, and we're ready to cut some invoices, okay? So I can do this in batch mode, of course, but I'm just gonna do this simply kind of one by one with a button here, all right? I'm gonna move up to the contract, which holds the actual billing elements that the rates and, and, and the invoicing attributes and the terms and things like that around that project, okay? So when I do that, you'll see a button at the top here called Create Invoice. Once I select that, then that's going to generate the invoices, a draft invoice for me based on anything that's eligible to date to be built into that project, based on the invoicing schedule that I set up on that contract. So you can see that based on the activity and the labor and the time that we've put in that project, I don't have any expenses yet, I've just booked time to it. It's a T&M project, okay? Um, the, the services estimate was 14000 Okay, I haven't invoiced anything yet, and the system has queued up a little over 5,000 for me that's flowing into this first invoice. Let's open that up and take a look at it. Okay, now you can see the individual chargeable transactions that flowed through. We have some PM work, 
and some architecture work okay, done by Prakash and Trisha. It was chargeable based on the bill rate that was set up on that rate schedule. Okay? And I could have adjusted that rate scale, scale on a project-by-project uh, project basis if I needed to, okay? giving me my total amount. Now, if I did have transactions I still want to book and present to the client, but they were non-billable, I would see those flow through here. And then just for my information, if there was some non-chargeable work, perhaps some rework or learning or shadowing, I myself would see that summarized down here, but that wouldn't be presented to the client. Okay? When I'm good with this, I can go ahead and, um, and distribute this to the client. And in doing that, that will book those actuals as um, invoice uh, transactions, and that will prepare those actuals then for a feed to the back office financial system, whatever back office financial system you're using to sit behind the, uh, the CRM PSA automation. Okay. So that finishes up our project lifecycle task. Let's come back and look at one more thing about analytics, and then we'll tie our demo up there. Okay. So let's go back to our dashboard. Actually, let's, we'll just take one step first. Let's go to the main menu here. And let's look at resource utilization. Of course, this is key for any services-based organization. Now, when I select this, I quickly get a real-time summary of my utilization by resource, by week, put against their targets. And that color lets me know that. So I'm just going to change my options here for a minute. Let's look at percent first. Okay. So this gives me the percent utilization. Those in green, if you look at my key at the bottom, are met or above their targets. So most of my staff had a target of 75% here. Okay? Those that are in red are below that target. And if I had them in yellow that were right getting close, I would see those showing up in yellow. So this just gives me a quick feel, kind of a visual look of where I am utilization. Of course, this can all be done with you know, standard reports as well. But this online view is really nice when I need that quick look. Okay? And I can choose to aggregate it by different time periods. So I could aggregate it by month, break it back down by week whatever works for that picture I'm looking for right now. Now I'm looking at everybody here on the left. Of course, I could always use my filters to search by business unit, a certain person, or see all my PMs together. So that allows me to really drill in to the different people when I want to focus and find things quickly. And as we saw when I first loaded it, I could actually choose hours here as well as an option if I just want to see that utilization hours versus the against the percentage. And all of those, again, this data flows through. Let's go back to our dashboard, kind of tie it all up there. Go to my dashboard, look at that project practice management dashboard. And if I look at my grid down in the bottom here, my active role utilization, that's going to take that utilization data. Okay, It's going to compare it to the target. And I've asked for this by role. Okay. So in this case, everyone's about at that 75% in my demo data here. Okay. But I could then look and sort by name, drill down by different attributes, and really kind of get that big picture of that utilization along with other financial metrics about the projects that my organization is building. Okay. So hopefully this gave you a quick look at the life cycle that, um, that this solution covers. So project service automation for CRM covers that end-to-end -end project life cycle, all the way from opportunity tracking through estimating, resourcing, time and expense, billing, preparing these financial transactions to hand over to the back, end, the back office financial system, and giving us a great suite of BI tools around that. Okay? So that ends our actual solution presentation part for today. So, Yen, back to you for a few follow-up slides on, on how this solution fits into a lot of the other um, solutions that Microsoft has for managing project-based businesses. Yes, yeah. thank you, Jen. Thanks for a great look uh, of uh, CRM Project Service Automation from Microsoft. It was uh, very good. Let me go ahead and share my screen. and. Uh, We'll uh, round up with a couple more slides here. Um, so now that we've seen the application, we'd like to spend a few minutes trying to compare and contrast the new CRM project service automation solution 
with uh, other Microsoft project management solutions that are in market. Let's start with a high-level positioning, describing uh, uh, with a description of each of, the, of these tools. First, uh, Microsoft Project Online, which is Microsoft's uh, positioning of projects and portfolio management uh, for typically for internal projects as opposed to client-facing projects. We have uh, CM Project Service Automation, which we've discussed uh, as an extension of uh, Dynamic CRM to provide an integrated solution for project sales and delivery. We have uh, Dynamics AX Service Industries ERP solution, which provides a fully integrated platform both for operational processes like project management and accounting and supply chain management, as well as administrative processes like finance and HR. And then finally, uh, Project Microsoft Project Client, which is a complementary product execution tool that uh, com uh, com completes these solutions. So uh, basically, it works with these solutions. If uh, we look at a more detailed functional comparison of these offerings, uh, this is a bit of an eye chart, but it goes through key areas of functionality and overlays it with a yes or no or additional comments, and we color coded it with red for features that are not available, green where features are available, and then yellow for uh, where you have partial availability of functionality. By looking at this, you can see that Microsoft Project Online is a relatively narrow focus around project execution and portfolio analysis and optimization which is why it's positioned for managing internal projects and portfolios. CRM project service automation strength lies, of course, in that sales and delivery of projects and the ability to provide other services in an integrated fashion, but doesn't have much around core administrative, administrative or supply chain functions. And then uh, Dynamics AX Service Industries ERP solution covers a much broader set of requirements across projects, operations, and finance, but doesn't have the depth of functionality in the sales and marketing area, or is uh, or, or in supporting other service domains like uh, field service, uh, the same way as Dynamics here and provides. So that provides a high-level comparison of capabilities uh, of each tool. Uh, the available functionality is obviously a key aspect of deciding which solution may be best for an organization. But aside from that, it's also important to look at an organization's IT and application strategy. For example, do you want a single integrated end-to-end -end platform, or do you prefer to have best-of-breed applications? And then understanding priorities of the buyer and the executive sponsor is also important. Do they purely want to address a more narrow set of operational requirements, or are they looking to satisfy the need of a broader organization such as finance and HR? We at uh, SA Global are familiar with all these tools, so we can help you with this determination. So that was a quick comparison of uh, various uh, Microsoft solutions. With that, we'll send it back to, over to Jason for a wrap-up. All right, Ian, thanks very much. And uh, we do have time for some Q&A, and, and several questions have come in here. Let's get to uh, a few of them, and I will, uh, <clears throat> I'll sort of read some of these off, and, and uh, Ian and, uh, and Jen, you can both, uh, both take these. Um, so maybe we'll start with one, uh, or just a diversion. So, uh, Marty asks to confirm, is this all enabled via the 2016 spring update RU1? Um, yes, it is. Just the recent release spring update. So if you go into the solutions section, you should be able to see a trial, um, uh, a trial install of project service automation. Okay, and then uh, we're going to do a few that maybe a little um, more detailed functional questions here, and, and uh, I'm not sure how many of these we be able to, to take, but um, can you keep multiple quote versions as well as versions of uh, WBS details? 
yes on the quote version. There is versioning around the quote. Um, not currently WBS versions, but I know that is, is on Microsoft's roadmap for future release. Um, so re regarding availability, does it only look at CRM bookings or does it consider Outlook calendar information like meetings and appointments of the target resource? Currently, it does just look at the project-based bookings that are done within CRM PSA. Um, I know Outlook integration is a hot topic on the roadmap from our last um, partner meeting with Microsoft, so they are looking at that integration both to put things out to um, Outlook and be able to consume, you know, calendar information back, but not currently there yet. Okay. Um, is there a way we can save a baseline for a project like we do in Server or Project Pro, Project Server or Project Pro? Like we mentioned in the first question, that baselining and WBS details are not currently uh, in the product. It's just a kind of a live, ongoing um, uh, WBS. But I know Microsoft is looking at that as a, as, as a future feature. Okay, I'm going to actually open a poll here. I'd love to just get a little bit of feedback from folks um, to know about uh, whether you're currently running dynamic CRM or if you're investigating it, um, whether you have a PSA solution right now or not. Um, and if you had any commentary, you know, feel free to add it into the chat or the Q&A. Um, we'd be just interested to know uh, what you thought about today, what your, what your situation is. Um, okay, so let me just look at another question here and see if some of the uh, marketing materials prior to the release of the skip. Prior to release, the scheduling screen shows sprints, which implies some sort of agile functionality. Is there, is there any um, agile functionality addressed in the CRM project service that was not covered today? No, not specifically. I think some of that was just how Microsoft had, you know, positioned um, using the WBS. There is not specific agile functionality like you'd find in TFS or, you know, other tools beyond what we saw today with the WBS. Okay. Um, there was another question. Um, sorry for the delay. I'm just, uh, my screen's freezing up a tiny bit. Um, so is there a cost for the CRM project service automation solution? Yes, there and, is. Uh, yes, do you yes. want to take that one? For sure, yes. There, there is a cost for uh, the CRM project or uh, service automation solution. Um, if you are a normal user, uh, just entering time and expenses, it is uh, the normal CRM base license, which is like uh, around $30 a month. And then for each full user, it needs to create a managed project, schedule resources, approve time sheets, and expense reports and so forth. There's an additional $35 a month, uh, which totals to about uh, $65 a month for the full user, which is uh, considered a power user. But um, normal users, uh, just time and expense, um, it, there's no additional license uh, above the standard SRM license. Okay. Um, is is there any integration for Microsoft TFS for task tracking? And I would ask, I maybe open that up to any other integration um, that, that, that are worth noting um, with regard to project service. Not out of the box. Um, I know Microsoft has talked about it. Um, Microsoft project client, I know is on the roadmap as well, um, but currently um, those integrations would need to be done. Um, independently through customization. Okay. And uh, I want to make the final call for questions here. We're going to get to one more that we have in the queue. Um, it's been asked in history a couple times. Um, are, so are, are these um, capabilities available for CRM on-premise, and if not, when? As far as I know, this is just available is, uh, as the online solution. Mm -hmm. But let me take that offline and just double check with Microsoft. That is the only roadmap I've uh, I've heard is staying in the cloud-based solution. Okay, great. Well, um, 
we would uh, we will start wrapping up there. If you do have any other questions, feel free to enter them. We'll, we'll capture a transcript of all the questions that were answered and get to any additional ones um, after today's event. We did record it, and we're going to be making this available uh, online quite soon. Um, so uh, with that, we're going to start wrapping up. I, I do want to remind folks to look for the evaluation at the end. We really appreciate your feedback. It only takes 15 seconds or so, and our speakers do as well. Um, Jens Sunoff, Jen Wisemore, thanks so much for taking the time to present all this today. It was really, uh, really informative and, and interesting to see some of these new capabilities. Thanks for the opportunity, Jason, and uh, thank you for thank you to the audience and have a good rest of the day. Great, thanks. And with that, we will conclude today's event. Have a great day, everybody.